Hello everyone, this is Rashida. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is going to be on gradient boosting machine. First, I will try to give you an intuition on how gradient boosting machine works without crunching too much math. Then develop a regression model in Python using gradient boosting machine. And then fine tune the hyperparameters to improve the model performance. So this algorithm works on boosting techniques. It uses a series of weak models sequentially, one after another, to improve the model accuracy based on the errors of the previous model. We start with one weak model, calculate the residuals or errors on the prediction, and then develop the next model based on that errors. The idea is to find out if there is any pattern in the residuals or errors. Let's deep dive into it. Let's assume this is our data set. We have ID, city, island. Just assume we have a store that is like Target. We have all kinds of items, clothing, electronics, homeware, cosmetics, furniture, office supply, everything. And we have the amount sold and finally the revenue. Just say we are using city items and amount as training features and trying to predict revenue. Just assume that we used a very simple decision tree regressor and got this prediction. We called it prediction 1. The next step in gradient boosting machine, it calculates residuals 1, which is nothing but revenue minus prediction 1. And then as per the gradient boosting machine techniques, this residuals 1 becomes our target variable, not revenue. It uses city items and amount as the features to predict the residuals. So the residuals becomes the target variable. This time you train the model assuming the residuals as the target variable this time. Say this is the prediction we got on residuals. So from this prediction, we calculate the prediction two. So the prediction two is just the addition of prediction one and residual prediction. But there is a little bit of twist to it. Because if we simply add prediction 1 to residual prediction, it brings us closer to the original revenue, but we are in a risk of overfitting. You are almost making the model memorizing your training data. So we don't want to do that. We take it slow. So just to tone it down and to avoid overfitting, what we have to do, we have to include a learning rate. So we cannot include this whole residual prediction to it. We can take a portion of it, a little portion of it, just to tone it down and just to not overfit. So this is what we do. Prediction 1 times learning rate times residual prediction. And what learning rate is? It is a value from 0 to 1 such as 0 0.1, 0 0.01, or 0 0.03, and usually we do not use as big as 0 0.8 or 0 0.9. So it actually doesn't serve the purpose. And this that's the hyperparameter for gradient boosting machine too. You need to figure out which learning rate actually works best for your model. Okay, so that's what we did here to calculate prediction two. And you can see the prediction two is actually a little closer to the revenue than prediction one. And then we calculate the residuals two again, which is actually revenue minus prediction two. So that way we calculated residuals one on prediction one. Now we are calculating residuals two on prediction two. The whole process that we have done with residuals one, like doing residuals prediction and then calculate prediction two, so we have to do exactly the same thing on residuals 2 again. And this process, this whole process, gets repeated until the residuals are not improving anymore or we reach to a point that we think, yes, the prediction is reasonable and something that we can accept. Okay, so that's pretty much how the gradient boosting machine works. Let's move to the Jupyter Notebook where we will develop a regression model using gradient boosting machine. Here we have our Jupyter notebook where we are going to build our regression model. 
And the data set I'm using today is insurance.csv data set. Please feel free to download the data set from the description box below. We have age, sex, BMI, children, smoker, region, and then the charges. So the charges, as you can assume, is going to be our label today, the target variable. And these are all the training features. Okay, so we have a total of 1338 data. We are checking for null values here and see we do not have any null values in any of the columns. Look, we have some of the categorical variable, this sex, smoker, and region. I had to convert them to numeric. This is how we do it. Here I am defining my training features and target variable from this data frame. If you drop these charges, rest of them are our training features. And if we just take df.charges, that's our target variable. Dividing the data set into training and testing set using train test split method. 20% of the data set is kept for testing and random state 9. You can use any other integers of your choice. Let's get into the fun part, the model development. First, let's just import from sklearn.ensemble import gradient boosting regressor. If we're going to call this gradient boosting regressor here, and look, I'm going to set all the default parameters and I'm not passing any parameters. We are going to play with parameters later. Regressor.fit x train y train. The model training is done. And now we are going to validate or test our model. From sklearn.matrix import mean absolute error. So we have to first calculate the prediction. Okay. Okay. So we are just using this regression model and then predict. We are going to predict first with the test or test data set. Okay. Then mean absolute error. So we have to pass our true label x test and the predictive label y pred. So we see this is our mean absolute error. Okay. Now let's do the same with the training data set to see if we are having any overfitting issues. Y pred train. So x train, okay, mean absolute error. So we are going to do with training data. Y pred train, okay. So these are pretty close actually. A little bit overfitting, but kind of close. So let's see if we can improve this model and improve this overfitting situation as well. No, it's not too much overfitting, but it will be nice if we can improve it a little bit, right? So I'm going to use the grid search CV method that Escalarn library has to try multiple parameters at the same time so that we don't have to keep trying one parameter at a time, okay? One value at a time. Uh, if you are not familiar with grid search CV, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you right now from Escalarn. Uh, dot model selection import grid search CV. Okay, now I'm going to call this gradient boosting regressor one more time because this time we are going to try some parameters. So, parameters what parameters we are going to try? Just a few minutes ago, I mentioned the learning rate. Learning rate is a very important parameter in gradient boosting regressor. So first, start with the learning rate. And I would want to try a few of them, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.03. Okay. And the next one, I want to try n estimators. Okay. Here we have 
the documentation scikit-learn so library on gradient boosting regressor and you can see here what are the parameters we have you can see the learning rate as you already mentioned other than that you can see we have quite a lot of parameters that we have seen in the decision tree algorithm as well you can see n estimators you can see mean sample leaf max depth and max features random state max leaf nodes we have seen them in decision trees and also random forest remember that so this is also another ensemble model so we would have some of them so i will try today in n estimators in my next video on classifier i will try and play with some other uh, parameters as well let's just stay with n estimators So I will try a few of them like 100. 100 is actually the default. So I used 190 and 120. Now regression model, the grid search CV. You have to pass the model, the GBM, the gradient boosting regressor first, GBM, and the parameters we want to try on it. Okay, parameters, okay. And then you just fit the training data to it. X train, Y train. So this time it's going to take a little longer. You can see that it took a little bit longer because it had to try all these parameters. Now let's see the best parameters we had. So best params. So these are the best params based on the grid search CV. Okay, learning rate 0 0.03 and n estimators 120. So please feel free to try some other parameters and or more values or different values on these same parameters as well. So we will test our model again. You can see we have 2410 this time, just a little bit improvement. But let's see what happens in the training side. 2428. As you can see this time, we improved the overfitting situation. It's not overfitting at all, so which is quite a good amount of improvement. The closer these training and testing errors are, the better it is for generalization. If you want, we can actually try a few more because you can see n estimates 120. So let's see if we put 130, it gives us better results. And 0 0.05, add another one instead of 0 0.1. Let's try with this new addition one more time. Okay, I will just run the same code. You see the model training is done. Let's see the best params. Okay, you see this time best params came down to be n estimators 130, but learning rate stays the same as before 0 0.03. See the mean absolute error? Look at that. It's a little lower this time. And this one too, the training error as well. So it looks like we really improved two things. First of all, definitely there is no overfitting at all. The model is generalizing really well. So that's what we want. And also, we improved on this number, the mean absolute error, a little bit. So please, the way you saw, I tried some different numbers to improve it a little bit, try some more uh, values here, and try to improve some more, or feel free to try some more parameters from here in the documentation. That's all I wanted to share with you today. I hope this was helpful. Uh, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.